My name is Randy Grimes. Yes, I, I had a 10-year career at Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I was a starting center for, for all of the years. And that's where my addiction started. I'm from Texas, had a great childhood, had the best parents, but had a great career at Baylor University, went off the second round to Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And one of the things that the older guys taught me was you do whatever you have to do to stay out on the field. And that is working through injuries, not being back in the training room. You don't want to be that guy labeled as a as a whiner or, or, or an injury risk. You know, you wanted to stay out on that field because if you weren't there, somebody was going to be there to take your position. So that meant taking handfuls of pain pills every day to stay out there. And, you know, I justified so many ways. You know, I wanted to be the best center that ever played the game. I wanted to play as long as I could. I wanted to feed my family. It was a job. And I wanted to leave the game or play the game on my terms. And, and I had so many neighbors in my life. You know, I had all the team doctors, team trainers, teammates, fans. I had all those people that would enable my addiction to keep going. All I had to do was play good every Sunday. And I always did. And that just kept it in one another week. What I never counted on was taking that addiction, that I wouldn't call it an addiction, I was calling it a necessary evil of the job, when in fact, it was a full-blown addiction. I mean, guys, I played 10 years in the NFL, and the last two years of my career, I don't even remember. I played them in a blackout because of drugs and alcohol. And I never thought that I was going to take all that into my private life. But you know what? The injuries just got worse. I had a full-blown addiction. And when I left football and retired, I didn't have all those enablers. I didn't have all those teammates and team doctors and team trainers and all that. And that's when life got crazy. You know, I retired back to Houston, and this addiction went on for another 20 years. And here's the thing. It didn't matter how many jobs I lost, how many cars, I lost, how many houses I lost, relationships, I couldn't stop doing what I was doing. And that was taking handfuls of pills every day. I couldn't stop it. And listen, you know what? I played, I played 10 years in the NFL. I played against some big, mean, bad guys. You know, tough guys. And I won most of those battles. You know, you don't get to play in the NFL that long unless you're winning those battles. But these guys, too, couldn't do it on their own. Addiction is real. And it doesn't matter how tough you are, it doesn't matter who you are, it's real. And one of the things that I want to talk about with you guys, you know, I came in September 22nd, 2009 is when I finally got sober. I flew into an airport, I flew into Fort Lauderdale, I drove up to a treatment center here, the treatment center that we all three work at right now, it's called the April Health and Palm Beaches. And I fell out of the car, and I crawled in on all fours. That's where I was in my life. You know, I had lost everything. And I crawled in on all fours, desperate, desperate to get well. Because let me tell you something, at that point, I didn't see any hope. There wasn't any light at the end of the time. You know, I, I, was, I would never have hurt myself, but I was ready for the next handful of pills to be my last. That's where addiction had taken me. Robbed me of everything. I lost everything. And I finally was at that point of desperation. And I remember somebody, when I checked in that night, I don't remember much about that night, but I remember somebody hearing somebody say, Randy, in order to get this thing, you've got to have the desperation of drowning man. And hey, I, I, as, as a young child, I almost drowned. I remember I was eight years old in Tyler, Texas. I almost drowned, and I still remember the desperation I had as I was fighting my way back to the top of the water. Clawing my way to the top of the water, I remember how desperate I was to get to the air, to get to the air. And I knew I was in the fight. I was in for the fight of my life. I knew what I was up against. You know, God has blessed me with so much in these last six and a half years. 
You know, everything that was promised to me, if I would just keep it as simple as doing the next right thing in recovery, and, I, and don't pick up no matter what. As an interventionist now, I get to travel all over the country and bring people back to treatment because this is such a family disease that families reach out in desperation now. You know, I get to go into homes and see the missing TV, the wrecked car, the, the grandmother sitting there with no jewelry because it's all been stolen and pawned for drugs. I get to see the tears, feel the pain that's in that house. But I also get to drag the addict back into treatment and I get to see the miracle that happens after 30 days of inpatient and the true meaning of recovery. Recovery works. But I don't want to leave here today, and I don't have a lot of time to talk. I don't want to leave here. First of all, I wanted you to know how bad it got in my life. And it got in everybody's life. Because that's what happens in addiction. Three things happen. You either wind up in handcuffs, in a hospital, or dead. That's the only three things. You do. There are no successful addicts out there. There are no successful hopeless drunks out there. And what I want you guys to know is, yeah, all that, but what do you do if you suspect somebody? What do you do? Well, the one thing you don't do is bury your head in the sand. Because it's not going to go away. It's only going to get worse. And you've got to reach out. You've got to reach out to a counselor, to a teacher, to your minister, to anybody. Because, listen, this is life and death. I see it every day. People die from this disease every day. And, and it's very serious. It's very serious that you don't bury your head in the sand. There are options. And you gotta trust your gut. You gotta know. You gotta know that reaching out is gonna save a life. You know, I'm so proud of the opportunity to work with these guys. We've got several in the We let Paul in because he's a major league baseball player. We just let him into our NFL group to carry our bags and stuff. But, but we've got a great group, group of former NFL players. Paul, the baseball player. You know, we're trying to carry this message to you guys to let you know that there is hope. There is hope. And if you know somebody that's suffering from this disease and addiction, there's hope. And there's help. But you got to reach out. Okay, don't bury your head in the sand. You know, it's not the drug dealers on the corners anymore that we worry about. I mean, yeah, they're always there. But we worry about... We worry about your drug, the medicine cabinets in your house, in your grandparents' house, in your neighbor's house. That's the new drug dealer of our of this generation. You know, prescription medication abuse and addiction is up over 200 percent just in the last 10 years. And you guys know it. You see it. You hear it. You know, prescription medication is being like crazy. I've got a treatment center that's full of people. That's what I've done. Sleeping pills, they've done pain pills, hooked on Adderall. You know, they can't stop. What's the definition of insanity? I mean, of addiction. Well, anything that makes your life unmanageable. Because of Adderall, because of abusing Adderall, their life is unmanageable. So that's what we're talking about today, guys. We, we want to bring awareness that there is help. And if you, if you suspect somebody, then reach out. Don't bury your head in the sand anymore. So the next speaker is a very good friend of mine. Um, like I said, he's a major league baseball player. He's one of those guys that I say all the time, if he can do it, anybody can. Because this guy was in bad shape. But he did do it. And here's a, he, he is another miracle of how recovery works. So listen, we're here for you. There is hope. We can help. We want you to reach out to us. You know, we, we've got websites, we've got Facebook pages. Anything you guys need, we are here for you. Okay? And even if you just need to, to talk.
talk about something. That's, uh, okay?